The University of Pretoria's Faculty of Veterinary Science has created a unique offering for horse owners, an equine cardiology consulting service called EquiCardio. Dr. Christina Eberhardt visits us in studio to shed some light on this exciting new development. We then chat to David Finlayson about its GS Carbonet Souvenir 2019 that won the best Carbonet in the world. But stay tuned for the news. Ilanco, we are driven by our vision of food and companionship enriching life. In today's news, AgriSA recently launched two pioneering projects in Limpopo and Pumalanga in a bid to boost the sector's transformation efforts. The projects are the culmination of a joint initiative with the Mutsepi Foundation. The aim is to reimagine development funding to accelerate the inclusivity of the agricultural sector. Due to legal and tax requirements and because of the commercial nature of these projects, the Mutsepi Foundation facilitated approximately 70 million rand of funding for the first two projects through a company established by the Mutsepi family. These projects will create and maintain 1,541 jobs and will impact on 5,705 livelihoods. And the Department of Agriculture in the Western Cape has set aside 37 million rand for restoring ecological infrastructure. Another 18,5 million rand has been allocated for river protection planned along the Kierboom, Yandetoys and up Upper Hex rivers. The Western Cape Department of Agriculture's River Protection Project is a risk reduction measure in rivers that were negatively impacted during the recent floods. These interventions involve stabilizing the river banks to prevent further soil erosion and improve ecosystem functioning. And according to a report by Fresh Plaza, a total of 19,1 million cartons of South African citrus had been shipped by the end of week 21 of 2022. This represents a 26,9% decline on last year's exports of 26,1 million cartons. According to the report, continued logistical issues are being experienced due to a lack of containers associated with the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Russia was a destination that generally received 11% of South African fruit exports. And that's today's news. Ilanko, we are driven by our vision of food and companionship enriching life. A specialist at the University of Pretoria's Faculty of Veterinary Science has created a unique offering for horse owners, an equine cardiology consulting service called EquiCardio, which provides comprehensive evaluation for horses with heart murmurs and arrhythmias. Christina Eberhardt visits us in studio today to shed some light on this exciting new development. Christina, why the huge need to address heart diseases in horses so let's look at the ho horse from a perspective of being a, an amazing athlete mm. they combine endurance in power and they are our partners in equestrian sports so for example a thoroughbred who will race at 60 to 70 kilometers an hour a draft horse can pull weights of a thousand kilograms mm. and an endurance horse can finish a 160 kilometer race in under eight hours and this is mainly due to their exceptionally well-developed heart and heart function. For um, these kind of disciplines, the horse needs to perform safely for their rider. Heart diseases often go unnoticed, and historically they were even considered 
not important because they do not show any clinical signs until they become relatively severe. So it is important for us as veterinarians to diagnose these diseases early in the course of the disease so that we can evaluate whether these horses can be used for what they're supposed to be used, so if they're safe to ride, if the disease has any impact on the performance of the horse, or if there are any treatment options for these horses. What are the causes of heart diseases in horses? So there are two main findings that will indicate that the horse has a heart disease, and that is arrhythmias and heart murmurs. An arrhythmia is an irregular heartbeat. So in a normal, healthy heart, the heart beats regular and evenly. And then there are certain heart diseases, like structural heart diseases, as well as diseases of the heart muscles or myocarditis, for example, and even diseases that do affect other organ systems that can cause arrhythmias in horses. And a heart murmur is a heart sound that we can hear in addition to the normal heart sound. And that is most commonly um, heard in horses that have valvular regurgitations. This means that the heart valves do not um, close tightly and then they start leaking. And depending on how much they leak, so on the severity of the disease, that can cause the heart to operate less efficiently and um, also the heart can become bigger over time. And this kind of disease can basically develop at any stage of a horse's life. And it is due to either degenerative abnormalities, so like when the heart valves become stiff with age, or um, with inflammation in mainly younger horses. Mm -hmm. So it is important that we look at these kind of diseases. In addition to that, we have congenital heart defects. So that means um, heart diseases that the horse is born with. Right. So these examinations that uh, we are talking about today, what does this whole comprehensive cardiac examination entail? So the comprehensive cardiac examination can easily be performed in the yard of the horse. Um, and we usually start by obtaining a thorough history of the horse, so questions related to their performance, what they're used for, and their general health are especially important. I will then perform a physical examination with a special focus on the cardiovascular system. And then there's two main specific examinations that can be or are usually performed, and that is an ECG examination and an ultrasound of the heart. Almost like with humans. Yes, exactly yes. like with humans. Mm -hmm. So with the ECG, that allows me to look at the heart rhythm of the horse, of the horse. Um, it often needs to be done during exercise or over a longer period of time, so for example over a 24 hour period of time. And for this we use like telemetric ECG devices, so that's a small device um, of the size of a smartphone that can be attached to the saddle of the horse. And it transmits the signal wirelessly to my computer and so I can look at the ECG in real time, mm -hmm. but it also records it on an SD card. So I can afterwards analyze it in detail and I can even detect single abnormal heartbeats. Well, stay with us. After the break, we'll continue our discussion with Christina Eberhardt on our horse's heart health. ABE Biotech. Fermentatie is gelijk aan prestatie. Goedemorgen, luisteraars. Millie is een koring in de afgelopen week redelijk goed gevaar voor levering in juli. Wat millie prijs is met 3,6% op, terwijl geel millie is 3,3% dierder is week op week. En die koring prijs wat met 2,2% gestuig het. Zonnebloem prijs het echter week op week met 0,8% gedaald, terwijl soja bonen voor levering in juli 3,6% goedkoper is. Olieprijs het even afgeneem van die vorige week af, maar nog steeds na bij die 120 dollar vat. En dan het die rand weer eens verswakt in die vernaamste wisselkoers, het 2.7% zwakker ten oor die dollar, 0.7% zwakker ten oor die pond en 1.6% zwakker ten oor die euro.
Welcome back to our discussion on a horse's heart health. And uh, with me is Christina Eberhardt. She is a specialist at the University of Pretoria's Faculty of Veterinary Science. Let's continue our discussion on the whole examination. Do you do an ultrasound as well? Yes, mm-hmm. actually one of the most important examinations in the evaluation of heart diseases. So with the ultrasound, we look at the heart from certain angles and we can diagnose the specific heart disease. It's especially um, important in horses with heart murmurs. For example, what we talked about before, um, horses that have like these abnormalities of the valves. Mm-hmm. So we look and measure the heart and look at the heart. We measure the heart. We measure the size of the heart. We look at the valves. We look at the um, heart muscle. We look at the function of the heart. And that will allow me to make a specific diagnosis. We do have a very specific ultrasound machine for that. It's actually an ultrasound machine that human cardiologists use to make a um, diagnosis in people with um, heart diseases. And it has like some additional features in comparison to the normal ultrasound machines we use in veterinary medicine. And that allows me to even see small changes Mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. the heart. Mm -hmm. Right. Now you've examined the animal and that animal has a problem or heart disease. What happens now? What's the next step? So once we made our specific diagnosis, obviously we will have to see if there is a treatment option. In a lot of heart diseases, unfortunately, we do not have treatment options. So then we have to answer several questions like, is the horse safe to ride? Do we think that the heart disease has any impact on the performance or the quality of life? Do we think there's any progression? Mm. So, for example, if we diagnose a mild heart disease, it is very likely that this doesn't have an effect. The horse can perform normally and is safe to ride. And in these horses, I usually recommend that the veterinarian comes once a year and listens to the heart and screens if there's any changes. And if there's changes, then we do a comprehensive cardiac examination again. If we diagnose diseases that's more moderate to severe in riding, then um, we need to monitor these horses very closely for progression. So then I usually recommend that once a year we perform this complete examination. Um, And it is possible that depending on the severity and the progression that I then recommend that the horse can only be ridden at a lower level or that it cannot be ridden at all because there is a safety concern or it cannot be ridden by children, for example, or used as a lesson horse because of safety concerns. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we do have treatment options for arrhythmias. Um, That depends on the type of the arrhythmia and the underlying disease. So, for example, one of the most um, common arrhythmias in horses is atrial fibrillation that also causes poor performance in horses. And we can treat this disease with either antiarrhythmic drugs or we can use um, a minimally invasive procedure called transvenous electrical cardioversion. And we can even do pacemaker implants in horses. Oh, wow. (laughs) That's quite something. Well, in closing, Christina, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, What can horse owners do to protect a a horse's heart? So it is not like in humans where the diet plays a massive massive role um, in the development of heart diseases. So horses do not have high cholesterol or hypertension. So there's no specific measure that a owner can take to prevent a heart disease. But owners can help to detect these diseases early. Mm-hmm. So they should have a yearly veterinary examination performed where the veterinarian listens to the heart on both sides of the horse as well to screen for any abnormalities. And if there's any concern in regards to the performance of the horse, so if the, the horse is not performing well or it um, has prolonged recovery after exercise, or um, it is fatigued easily and it has shortness of breath, then these horses might have heart diseases and then they should also be examined early in the disease. Well, thank you for that advice. Good Good. advice from uh, Christina Eberhardt on your horse's heart health and uh, they developed a a special examination to prevent these diseases to, uh, to become severe.
BKB, die betrouwbare tuiste van landbouw. BKB, die betrouwbare tuiste van landbouw. Last month, David Finlayson's flagship GS Carbonet Souvenir 2019 was announced the best Carbonet in the world. Now, owner winemaker David joins me now. David, first of all, congratulations. Before we talk about this award-winning wine of you, uh, tell us briefly about the competition. And I hope I pronounced this correctly, the Concours International de Cabernet. That's, that sounds just perfect. Your French is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, Lisa. Um, it, it's a specialist competition. It, it focuses on Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc. And then also there are a couple of other Cabernets around in the world, but one doesn't really hear about them very often. Uh, Cabernet Blanc, apparently. I've never seen it in South Africa, but these occur. So, so basically they, um, they taste all the wines in these categories and then choose the very best out of the best to be, well, the first year they choose the gold medal winners and then they choose the, the trophy winner. And we were very fortunate to win it. So the, the competition is run by the Union of French Sommeliers or Union de, de Sommeliers Français. I can try and be French as well. Um, and they are headed by Philippe Faure Brac, who was the best sommelier in the world. Um, I can't remember exactly when, but a few years ago. So it, it has very high standing. Um, and you know, nowadays there are a lot of wine competitions uh, and lots of awards, but to get a competition with credibility and to have the kind of the, the, the level of tasters and panel of tasters that they have, and then to, to get their waters is for me quite a feather in our cap. So how did it work? Did you have to enter? Yes, yes, you, you enter, you send your wines to France. Um, this is the second year that we've entered. Um, and and we, we did quite well last year with our Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, we have two Cabernets. We have the blended uh, one from various vineyards, which goes under the David Finlayson label. It's a black label. Uh, and that one got a gold medal last year. And this year we entered uh, both that one as well as our GS, which is our single vineyard wine. And the GS uh, won the award for the best Cabernet in the world. Yeah. Let's talk about you. How long have you been a winemaker? Way too long. <laughs> I've actually been a winemaker, well, put this way, I qualified at Elsenburg in 1993. So that's almost 29 years, 28, 29 years. Um, I come from a family of, of winemakers. My, my grandfather started the business. Uh, we, we've lived in a number of wine farms over our lives. So I was born on Hartenburg Estate. I was raised on Blauklippen. And I started my career with my father um, at uh, Glen Carlo. Uh, and then about uh, 18 years ago, I, I started, I bought this little rundown farm called Edge Baston here in Stellenbosch uh, in the foothills of Simonsburg. And I, you know, I built it up um, over the period of time to what it is today, a little family vineyard where we focus really on the wine, the vineyards, the winemaking, um, yeah, so and, and it is kind of based on the almost the European business model of, of a small family business, not that tourist orientated. Um, we're not really open to the public. We, we focus on selling our wine through our distribution channels around the world. Now, we know Stellenbosch is known for its uh, Cabernet Sauvignon wines, and we recently spoke to Christo Lariche about the unique terroir in that region. Tell us about this particular wine, the GS Cabernet Sauvignon 2019. What was different? Well, I mean, look, Stellenbosch is known for Cabernet. And I was, as I said, I was born and raised in Stellenbosch, went to school in Stellenbosch, studied in Stellenbosch. And, and um, you know, my father back in the day won Diners Club Winemaker of the Year in 1982 with, with uh, Blaucliff and Cabernet Sauvignon. So it's always been the variety that's been at the forefront of my mind as a 
from since when I was a young boy. And and I know what Stellenbosch Cabernet is. It's one of the best Cabernets in the world. So it's interesting because uh, the more one looks into it, and you're always learning. You'll, I'll learn as a winemaker until the day I'm not here anymore. Um, but Stellenbosch has various microclimates and terroirs and different soils and things. And, and the Cabernet that's grown on the Simonsberg is not the same as the Cabernet that's grown on Stellenbosch Mountain or on the Helderberg or down, you know, in the, in the valleys and the Botleray hills and that kind of thing. Um, so what's interesting, Simonsberg Cabernet is known as the muscular Cabernet, the powerful Cabernet. It, it's very tannic. We have these shale soils and red soils, which give the wines uh, give the vines a lot of growth and power and it just reflects in the wine so the wines are always very muscular very I call it the poyak of South Africa um, wines which can mature for 30 or 40 years sometimes they need they need quite a bit of time to mature and soften and express themselves um, but the beautiful thing is that that Stonebush is starting to hang its hat really on Cabernet Sauvignon and the, and all the winemakers have realized that Yes, you know, you can make lots of other varieties of wine, but you should focus also on what's best in your region. And Cabernet Sauvignon and Stellenbosch is king. And that's kind of um, what I've also focused on. So, so I have a little parcel of soil. Um, the, the farm runs almost 380 degrees on a slope on, on one of the foothills of the Simonsberg. And um, there's a piece looking northeast. It's on uh, decomposed granite, shale soils, um, quite a high clay content. And year after year, that specific Cabernet Vineyard has made our best wine. Um, so it's taken me quite a long time to figure out exactly how I want to make that wine. But you know, we've, we've been doing it since 2006 as the GS bottling, uh, which is made in honor of the great Cabernets which were made in the 1960s by George Spies. Um, and the whole idea behind that is first, it has to be 100% pure Cabernet, no other grape varieties blended in. Um, and it has to be a wine that's going to last for a very long time. And that's how I make the, the GS Cabernet. So it is a big, powerful, muscular Cabernet soil. What were some of the judges' remarks? Well, it's interesting because they did a, a press release and, and they, they just said the judges unanimously love this wine above all others. Um, I don't really know what that means, but... Um, I did spend some time working in France in, in, in my youth back in the day, um, in 1994, no, 1995, sorry, I worked at Chateau Margaux in Bordeaux. And um, I do understand the French love a classic style Cabernet. They don't like wines that are too alcoholic, too jammy, too sweet. On the other hand, they also do not like wines that are too green and too acidic. So, so they look for balance. And I think balance is the key word for for or when I've always dealt with French winemakers or French judges or sommeliers. And, and I think we've got that perfectly in this vineyard and in this wine. So they were very happy with it. Um, yeah, it was just, it's nice to see that without a doubt, they put this, this one above all others. What does the award mean to you, David? <laughs> well, it's quite funny, you know, I think I always had big uh, shoes to, to fill with, with my dad, uh, Walter, who was really one in the 80s and well, even from the 70s and the 80s and then early 90s, still one of South Africa's top red wine makers. And, and I always wanted to kind of emulate his reaching the top of Cabernet production like he did with Diners Club. But uh, I never I never got the chance with Diners Club to, to get that award. But yeah, perhaps I took it a step further. And it's just nice to, to sort of carry on that family tradition um, to be known as, as a family that uh, have made for the last 40 or 50 years um, from the days of my grandfather up to now made great Cabernet Sauvignon and hopefully continue that tradition in South Africa. And is he still around? Yes, yeah, so, well, my dad's retired, but he um, he's around. And we actually last Saturday night um, celebrated my 50th birthday with a 1972 Montan Cabernet Sauvignon, which was the, the old name of Hartenberg. And the wine, so 50-year-old wine, it was outstanding. Everybody that was at the dinner, I just thought it was fantastic. And it's so great to, to have him with us still and to still enjoy wines. And that's the beauty of wine. It's, it's about a passion, a feeling. Um, it's about events and, and just friendship and love and family and those kind of things. So wine is more than just a product. It, it has emotion attached to it. And that's what's great for us. Well, congratulations to David Finlayson. They were awarded the best Cabernet in the world for their GS Cabernet Sauvignon 2019.
Welkom aan alle kijkers van vandaagse Plaas TV program. Ik is Jean de Willers van Plaas Media en hiermee breng weer die opkomende veilings wat voorleen. Ons koop vandaagse kalender met HP en Leon Lisa Bonsmara se productieveiling af. Hierdie veiling wordt op die 22ste juni op die Plaas Twijfelhoek in Sladdy door Karoe Oes aangebied. Die aanbod op die veiling sluit 35 SP bille, 15 SP koeie en verse, 180 commerciële koeie en kalvers, as ook 70 drachtige koeie en verse in. Dan ook kan Ingo Boerboele, een veiling wat topgehalte boerboel genetica sal bied, op die 25 juni, juni by Kaasel de Wild in Morimoli. Hierdie veiling word dier André Kok en Sien Limpopo aangebied, met Niel Swart as afslaar op die dag. Bos of Pons Maras, hou hulle jaarlikse productieveiling op die plaas Brakfontein tussen Delmas en Leandra op die 29ste juni. Die aanbod op die veiling sluit 25 bille en 100 vrouwelijke dieren in. Hierdie veiling wordt aangebied door BKB met Frik Verster as afslaar op die dag. Dan hou Ab George Bonsmaras hulle 24ste productieveiling op die 1ste juli op die Ab George Plaas in Wasbank in Kwazulu-Natal. Die veiling wordt aangebied door IAM, IAM auctioneers met Brandon Leer as afslaar op die dag. Die aanbod op die veiling sluit 70 bille en 60 koeie in. Ons sluit dan vandagse kalender met Thiele Estates Breffert's se 7e productieveiling af. Hierdie veiling wordt op die 7e juli op die plaas Skikhoek buiten Pul Pietersburg dier OVK aangebied. PM Swart sal die afslaarsrol op die dag behartig. Die aanbod op die veiling sluit 30 Breffert's toetbille in. En dit is al van my kant af vir die weekse kalender tot volgende week. Tot ziens.